Hey guys, Michael from Copper vs Glass. One of the main reasons why I get a OnePlus device is timely updates with Android. So today we're going to be taking a look at some of the best features of Android 10 on my OnePlus 6T. So let's take a look. Now some of you may not have actually received your over the air update for Android 10 on your OnePlus device. If I go into my system, go into system update, you can see here that I am fully up to date with Oxygen OS Android 10.0. Now if you don't have this, there's a couple of ways you can get around it. You can download the file which I'll have linked in the description down below, or you can head over to the Play Store and download the Oxygen Updater application. Now what this basically allows you to do is download the over the air update directly to your device and then install it like you would any other application but it installs a full software update so the great thing about this once you go into your settings go to system update all you have to do if you don't have Android 10 is click on the gear icon at the top select local upgrade and then you'll have a list and one will say Android 10 and then you're pretty much set and ready to go and again links to everything that I talk about in this video will be in that description just below that like button but what is new with Android 10? Well, let's take a look at some of the new features and changes to my OnePlus 6T. So the first thing that you can see is the new gestures, which we'll go on to in just a moment, and a slight change here to the notifications as well. But a lot of the changes come from behind the scenes or within the settings themselves. So if I head down to the settings, you can see it's a lot more condensed, you've got a ton more information, and it's bunched in a way that's a little bit easier to read and find exactly what you need to find. Now the cool thing as well is that once you go down to the display, display options, you then got a really awesome option in the ambient display to get a little bit more information. So if I go into the ambient display mode here, you can see that you've got the normal stuff that you would find, but you do also have contextual information in regards to maybe some music that you might be listening to, or anything else that it may think that you want to look at at any one time. Now you've got the usual array of night mode and reading mode, and then you do also have a new video enhancer which yes, does kind of only increase the contrast and saturation, but it can look really nice depending on which video you're watching. And the rest of the display options are pretty standard for a OnePlus 6T. Under screen calibration, you do have a new way to calibrate your device. You've got three brand new photos at the top here. So again, getting the right calibration and the right color temperature for your screen is a little bit easier. Now I used to have it on the vivid mode, but it has a weird green tint to it now, which is a little bit strange. So I actually have it on advanced AMOLED wide gamma and a very neutral white balance in regards to cool or warmer tones. You've also then got a brand new customization screen, which some of the settings are what we've had before with the OnePlus devices in regards to the fingerprint animation, wallpaper, the clock style on the ambient display, but it's just a little bit better laid out in my opinion. So first off then you have the accent color, so you can choose from a ton of different colors or select something custom. And the thing that I really like as well is you can switch the display at the top here to go from light mode to dark mode, so you can see how it's gonna look in different scenarios. Speaking of dark mode, you've then got the tone select, you've got colorful, light, and also then that dark mode as well, which I'm gonna go into a little bit more in just a moment. You've also then got the option which is brand new in regards to selecting the shape of your notification and just in general the pop-ups of things like volume and stuff like that. So as you can see here, you've got a more square option. So mine at the moment is very rounded here on the corners, but you can have a square option like this. You've got a teardrop design or something very Samsung with a kind of round circle sort of shape. So again, you can select exactly what you want to and then save it if you need to. Now you can then also change the icons themselves, which has always been one of my favorite features about a OnePlus phone. And you've got the standard array of the OnePlus icons, round icons with some custom ones like Instagram and Twitter, for example. You've also got some square icons, the option to then go to the Play Store to download a ton more icon packs. But for me, I'm just a fan of these standard icons. You've also got the option to change the font as well. So you can go from the Roboto font or you can have the OnePlus font, which again, spaces things out a little bit more, has slightly thinner text, for example. And this one actually changes everything in real time in regards to even at the top here on the notification shade, you can see how it changes just ever so slightly. And then lastly, under customization, you do also have some presets here in regards to vibrant, illuminating, and also dark as well to get exactly what you're looking for. So safe to say there is a ton of customization options with the new version of Android 10 on the OnePlus 6T. 
which then brings us on to the navigation options. So go into buttons and gestures, navigation bar, and then you can see that you've got the standard array of the three buttons with back, home, and multitasking that we've had before, the new gesture layout, which is what pretty much every Pixel device is using, and then the original OnePlus gestures, which uses the complete full screen with no real indication with regards to what you're doing, so some people may not like that. The new options, however, you can swipe back on the bottom half of the screen, swipe up to go home, swipe up and hold to go to your recent applications, switching between your recent apps with the bar along the bottom as well, and then you can do all of this within landscape. Again, it does take some getting used to, but if you're a fan of gestures, these are some of the best that I've seen just below what Apple are doing with their iPhone and iPad range. And you can also give it a try for yourself with a full walkthrough of the actual gestures themselves. So again, in regards to swiping back, going home, going between different applications, it has basically a live preview, as you can see here, for you to actually try it for yourselves and see if it's something that you will or won't like. It's a little bit disappointing that they took out the previous way that you could navigate the OnePlus phones, as if you were a fan of that, you can't go back to it at all, but these new navigation options are probably some of the best that I've seen on any Android device. But again, guys, let me know in the comment section down below if you've got Android 10 running on any of your devices and let me know exactly how you're using it in regards to navigation, whether you've got buttons, gestures, or something completely different like using just sonar on the Pixel. New with Android 10 is also some features brought over from the newer OnePlus devices, so one of those is Game Space. Now what this basically allows you to do is have one kind of like a launcher for all of the games that you're going to have installed on your device. So again, it's really easy to use, you've got some options down the bottom for gaming mode being on and off, and you can also use Fnatic mode if you want to. You can add new games, change the layout itself, the settings are pretty simple, it's just in regards to maybe muting notifications or phone calls and things like that, but it's a really great way to get access to all of your games in one place. Whether it's something that I'm really going to use on a regular basis, I can't say just yet as I don't really have that many games installed, but if you are a heavy gamer on OnePlus, this may be something that you might be really into. But for me, not so much, which is why I keep it hidden. Next up is a slight change to how you do the volume and media controls on OnePlus. You can see here that you've got a lot more granular control in regards to where the sound is coming from, whether it's going to be on the device or something Bluetooth related. And then you can also go through and individually change anything that you need to, which is very simple to do. So again, you can just press on this setting icon. You can do things like alarms, sound, vibrate, set it to ring, silent, anything you need to do. So again, a little bit simpler than what we had before. And then lastly, no matter who you are, everyone is searching for dark mode on either Android, iOS, Windows, macOS, whatever it might be. So as you can see here, Google Photos and also the Play Store are very bright, very vibrant. However, if you go into the settings, go down to the customization options, tone, and then switch over to the dark mode, not only is it going to make the system dark, as you can see just here, it's also going to change up some of the applications. So heading back into photos, you can see that it's got a really nice dark mode to it now. And and again, if you've got an AMOLED screen, you're looking to save battery, or if you're using your phone at nighttime and you don't want a ton of bright light, this is a really great option to have. So again, heading into the Play Store, you can see there the change. Again, does the exact same thing, so every time I go into the Play Store now, it's going to have that dark mode to it. Now, this is something that YouTube has had for quite some time on Android. However, it does it automatically now using dark or light mode, so no need to go into any settings or anything like that. Now, some newer applications have also been updated recently, so something like Instagram now has a dedicated dark mode as well. For me, I'm not necessarily a huge fan of dark mode on Instagram. I personally think it looks a little bit better with a white background, but that's completely down to personal preference. But if you're looking for a really nice dark mode across your whole system, and also some really awesome applications also get in that dark mode, this is a great option. Now one thing that I would say is something like Instagram, if you go into the settings, you can't actually change the dark mode directly from within the application like you can with something like YouTube. So that is definitely gonna be system specific. So if I head back into my settings, customization, tone, and then change it back to the light or even the colorful mode, when I then go back into Instagram, you can see then that it changes instantly back to that light mode, which again, some people may or may not prefer. And just on a quick side note, there is also a brand new Google G Cam application that allows you to get the Pixel camera on your OnePlus device, including really awesome features like night sight, a better portrait mode, plus a ton more. And again, I'm gonna have that linked in the description down below. 
And that's gonna do it guys for this video on Android 10 running on my OnePlus 6T. I'm gonna have a link in the description down below to all of the OnePlus devices that are available with Android 10 and also all of the direct download links as well. Now, don't get me wrong, this isn't a massive update for Android like we've seen in the past, but it does bring with it some really awesome features and I know it necessarily doesn't, but my OnePlus 6T definitely feels a little bit faster. It may just be down to the new gestures, for example, in regards as to how I'm navigating the device, but it feels kind of like a brand new phone, which in this day and age, just getting that from a software update can be quite hard to do. One of my favorite features has to be the new dark mode, but I also like the new gestures as well. Like I mentioned, they do take some getting used to, but once you've got your head around it, it's a really awesome way to navigate your device. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to leave it a thumbs up down below. And if you've got any questions, comments, or you need any help with installing Android 10, let me know in the comments section below, or you can send me a tweet on Twitter at Copper vs. Glass. For more great content, don't forget to subscribe. And if you're already subscribed, turn on that notification bell so you're notified anytime that I post a new video here on the channel. I'm Michael from Copper vs. Glass. Thanks very much for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next video.